Mm-hmm. All right, so let's roll out the red carpet and uh, yeah. give a Pacific Northwest welcome <laughs> to Anderson Pack, Woo! Seattle. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> welcome, welcome, man. Welcome. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. He's here. You mean to move this out of your way? Um, it's it's kind of awkward in the middle, right? Sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, nervous for uh, Oxnard Eve? No, I'm <laughs> I'm, hi- I'm hyped, bro. Yeah. I'm just like you know, anticipation. I got the butterflies in my stomach. I feel good. Feels like when you have to like take a duke. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it feels yeah, like? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. all day you just Thank got you. a you got a yeah, number two like brewing. Bets. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. oh, shit. <laughs> Was it the same number two you've had like last three albums? Like, it's, it's, is it, does it change on the release date? Uh, yeah, this one's a little bigger. You know, the stakes are a little higher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's more people involved, but uh, you know, you always have that feeling like it's, it, it feels great when you when what you put so much work into like finally people are gonna be able to experience it. So yeah. yeah. So is the is the release gonna be at midnight? Is it nine? Is it's gonna, gonna be, be an early midnight. leak? It is not. Yeah, it is midnight. midnight. Uh, East Coast and then nine so, o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our time and it'll be everywhere. All DSPs. Be, okay. Oh. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting, bro. And and for you to be here, you know, the eve of, it's really cool. We really appreciate it. Seahawks. Uh, th- are you going to the game tonight? You're gonna be out there? I'm not. But they were screaming outside. I thought they were protesting. Like I kept hearing it. The construction workers and everything. And and uh, so I feel like. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm all I'm all with it, man. Oh Seahawks. no, it's on. Yeah, on game day, this city is all blue. Yeah, absolutely. Fan. I'm a diehard fan starting today. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Welcome, <laughs> aboard. Welcome <laughs> aboard. Welcome aboard to the club. <laughs> hey, so before we talk about the music, because I do want to talk about that, but um, with the forest fires, everything in Southern California, and you being from that area, is your family, your neighborhood, your friends, your loved ones, are they okay? Are some of them displaced at all? Yeah, my uh, my sisters and uh, a couple of my friends, like they had to be evacuated, but yeah. I think everybody still good nobody died and i think everybody still got their house okay and uh but oh, yeah they, they, we've had a lot going on in 805 with the fires and then with the shootings and stuff so yeah, yeah we just uh we just announced the carnival the andy's oxnard carnival so we just trying to do something for the community yeah. have them yeah. all come out for free and give, give a little bit of relief you know well let's awesome. get to that carnival because it, it did it sell out already i heard the carnival sold, sold out in minutes okay yeah <laughs> so explain to that because obviously none of us can go because it's not here in seattle it's uh it's back home in oxnard right yeah so is it is it a music festival is it just a day is it just hang with Anderson type of thing yeah, with the a, carnival. It's a full day, just carnival rides for the kids. We got food trucks, all kinds of stuff, all free, free parking, like all kinds of good entertainment for the family in the daytime. And then at night we got the live listening. So we're going to have like uh, in the OPAC theater, we're going to be playing the music. I'm going to do a little performance and I got some special guests nice. coming out. Oh. So Now yeah. that you're a diehard Seahawks fan, you got to do one up here too. Yeah, yeah why not? Come yeah, on. do one. I'll go to the stadium <laughs> and we'll, we'll just rock out. I like it. Whose idea was that? Because this is something that lately a lot of artists have been throwing their own festivals or their own music events. This kind of give back to the community slash listening party is brand new to me. Like, has mm-hmm. this, like, who came up with this? Where'd this come from? I love it. Yeah. Whose baby was it? I mean, you know, it's my baby. I got a good team, though, to make it happen. You know, I just spew out ideas and then they just figure out how to make it happen. You know, where to get the money to do it. That's and what like, we do here, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout you out know? to Sam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And it's like, you know, we named the, the album Oxnard, so it was only right to do something. I always yeah. wanted to do something in the OPAC. Nobody ever does anything in my performing arts center. And they, they were all with it. The, the city let me shut down the block. And, like, yeah, they, everybody was just really helpful. So, Yeah, that's yeah. really dope. So uh, you have a wife and a son, right? So what do you do when you go on tour? Do you bring them I with you? I got two you? sons now. Oh, you have two sons now. Yeah. Nice congratulations. I've been Yep. Do you uh do you take them with you on tour? How is it like being so Hell far no. away from them? How do you um, keep in contact? It's really hard. Uh, it's really unbalanced. Thank God for my wife. She's like full time mom, and all I have to do is just like you know keep the lights on, you know, yeah. come in, <laughs> hang out, you know. All right, gotta go back on tour. Yeah. But yeah, eventually I gotta take. Especially my oldest one. He's getting so big. Every time I come back, he's like doing something new. I'm just missing out. So I'm taking him on the next tour, and he's gonna have to have his daddy time. How old is Keep his daddy one? out of trouble. Yeah. How old is the oldest one? He's seven. Oh my son yeah. is seven. Yep. You should brought him. They could be playing right now. I know. Back man. here somewhere, running around. It's, yeah. <laughs> is he into like video games and gaming? Like, is that what he's doing, yeah, or is he he's outside into, like, running around? YouTube tutorials. Oh my god. And so I don't know what son, kind of weird stuff into, these like, kids Fortnite are into. Fortnite and Roblox and he, stuff too. He's kind of into Fortnite, but he's more into watching other people play the video games. I yes. swear, that's like a new kid it's thing. Some it's a new really generational weird. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's so weird. Like, Give me this it started with him watching kids unopen toys. Yes. Unwrap. Unwrapping presents. Weird kids. 
these days. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know like, what to do. They don't go. They don't play games. They watch kids play games. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really it's weird. It's an interesting generation. It's so it really weird. Is. And yeah. he's obsessed. He's obsessed with it. Any of y'all into that? I feel like we may be talking smack about one of you in this Looks room. Looks like a tutorial crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody watch other people <laughs> unbox stuff or play yeah, stuff? Right this guy. You. I like to watch other people do things, but not like. Tutorials like to stuff. teach me yeah, something. Good so porn, weird. regular yeah. shit. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, right. yeah stuff. regular people I will stuff. I give it to YouTube though. My so YouTube is the reason my son knew like his alphabet and colors and and all and everything super super young. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So shout out to YouTube. Ain't that yeah. your job? I was gonna say. I was just gonna uh, say. Yeah. What about books? I YouTube? gave him the computer. <laughs> job done. YouTube's the new parents. I like it. <laughs> hey, so let's get into the music because I'm sure at one point there was somebody saying. No, Anderson, don't play drums. No, don't rap. No, don't sing. This is the box you belong in. I'm sure there must have been somebody uh, saying, no, cut down all those facets. You belong in this lane. That's right. Yeah, there's always someone projecting their fears on you, and it's just because they can't do it, they think you shouldn't do it either. And, like, a lot of my 20s, like, was based around that, too, like, kind of finding myself and uh, listening to certain people and and realizing that it was all BS and then eventually just being like, you know what, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I'm gonna focus 100% on what I wanna do and just build me and build my craft and, and can't nobody do me like me. And right. that was it, yeah. Mm -hmm. How was it working with like Dr. Dre and I mean like your protege, right? So like, how does that make you feel? Cause that's, that's a pretty big name. Yeah. It's surreal, you know, like Dr. Dre is a part of my musical DNA. Like since I was a child, since I was my son's <laughs> age, I wanted to yeah. like, yeah work with Dre and Snoop and that that was just the first memories I have of like when I wanted to be in music and be in hip hop it was Dr. Dre and Snoop and so it's amazing to be able to work with him and see him put so much of his time in my project as if it was his own project yeah and just see him really be excited He's like a kid, like when, when we were working like and mixing and stuff, you, you can see he hasn't been probably this excited and, and worked this close with an artist probably since Eminem. Like we, he's yeah. really worked from start to finish and mixed and produced and just, you know, he's just, he's my mentor, you know, I can hit him up about anything. I'll be sending him memes, all kinds of stuff. So it's like, it's just the big homie now. So it's, it's really surreal like to, to be at this point. Right? How dope is it that you get to send memes to Dr. Dre? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, did you see this cat video? Right, Look at this, exactly. like that is, that's on another level. I don't get it, AP. <laughs> <laughs> What's even more dope is just to have someone of like, I mean, he's like a genius, right? Like mm -hmm. legendary, and he believes that much in you where he's putting in all this work. Like yeah, that's yeah. got to feel good. Yeah, it's dope. And he's like at a, at a point now too where he has a lot of trust in me. He's yeah. like, you know, let me know, if, you know, because he's, you know, he's in his own thing. You know, he, he doesn't like anything, in any, any kind of music. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the new music he doesn't feel. So I bring people over there, a lot of new artists and stuff. I'm like, yo, check him out. And yeah. He, you know, it's like his, his window to like what's going on now. And then I'm learning a lot from him too. So. You're like a breath of fresh air probably for him. Yeah, You're yeah. a breath of fresh air actually for all of us. Oh, like thanks. it's really nice to have somebody like you in, in the business because it kind of opens up a different door mm -hmm. than what's kind of going on in like the rap game right now. Right. So I appreciate that the music, it's musically talented. You know what I mean? Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so let me go back to Dr. Dre, because how do you fight the urge? Like a young Anderson Pack, first time meeting Dr. Dre, first time meeting Snoop, how do you fight the urge to be like, bro, let me get a selfie? Oh like, like I'm trying to keep it professional, but I got to get a selfie. Like, how, how do you do that? How do you fight that urge? I'll just say this. I learned the hard way. Like, Thank God before I got to Dre, there's so many awkward moments I had with people in the studio <laughs> where I just embarrassed myself and I learned, okay, never doing that again. I don't know how many people in here are trying to be in the industry or like producers or anything, but don't ever ask for a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> the people that you want to work with, just be try to be as normal as possible and, you know, talk to them and be yourself, you know? Like, that's what I learned. Like, by the time I got to Dre, I was just comfortable with my own skin. And, and like, a lot of these people that I work with, it's just, I'm just me, you know? And that's what, that's what they really are looking for, people that can talk to them like a normal person. Of course, I'm fanning out and screaming inside. Right. Inside. But, yeah, Can't it's, let just, know. Yeah, Don't let it's know. just like... <laughs> Once you get over that and you just realize, okay, this person's just like me. He got issues mm -hmm. just like me. And it's like, we're here to work. And then, the, you know, they got a lot of mutual respect for me, too. And then, then you can get your selfie, like, later. You okay. know, like sneak it in. speaking from experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Who, who was yeah. the first one that you, that then, you fangirled out on? Yeah, oh, man. Fanboyed out, Fan, by the way. Yeah, no, but yeah. All due respect. I was fangirling. No, it's okay. okay. <laughs> um, it, was, it was probably someone, like, like super not even, like, crazy. Like, I think if you the, can't even remember. Then the I first time I met Earl Sweatshirt, I was probably like, oh. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my I was God. like, this is my CD and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, he was like, all right. Yeah. 
Cool, thanks. Lame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, then, but then I went on tour with him later. You know, he didn't remember that, like, when our awkward meeting the first time. But, really? you know, I was a totally different person. Like, I was a cool guy. And then, you know, I didn't have to talk about the You're time. You're like, thank God really he didn't remember that moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, there was, there was mad awkward times. So what can you tell us about Oxnard? I mean, we're a couple we're a couple hours away. You can let some of the yeah. secrets out the bag, right? Yeah, Oxnard is just a super super ambitious sound. You know, it's like same man, new car. This is obviously it's not going to be like Venice. It's not going to be like Malibu. It's going to be like Oxnard. You know, yeah. we're headed mm-hmm. up the coast. I learned all these different things. Malibu took me like all over the world. Like uh-huh. we toured for two years plus. We probably still could have been touring, but I had to stop to make the new album. But it was like taking all those experiences and bringing them back home, working with someone like Dre. This is like, you know, again, I think my best my best material is when I work with like one producer. So, you know, even with like my projects like Yes Laud with Knowledge, like it's like a it's a different thing you get when you work with a a producer that you trust and they can bring the best out of you. So that's that's the the major difference in this album. And uh, it's just a lot of fun, man. It's not rocket science, but we're having a lot of fun tackling all the different genres and different vibes that I that I can do. You know, a lot of people say he can do a lot. A lot of range and stuff so i had a lot of fun with that on yeah. this album so when it's talk when you're talking about like the two-step song with with kendrick or you're talking about like the the festival booty clapping twerk song mm-hmm. like who are you mm-hmm. or you're talking about That's like push a t like you know something you can like you know work out to or like i don't know punch a r- wall run too. from yeah. security <laughs> guards too yeah yeah shout and out then, to the bowler in the audience yeah <laughs> then you got the something you can light the candles too with with J Cole and uh, you just got uh, I just like wanted to tackle all kinds of things and then I, I, I recorded a bunch of music and just picked the best you know that's yeah. my process. Would you do one like in Spanish like how Drake be doing Spanish music? Absolutely, I, I can see you doing do that. I can see you pulling yeah. that off. Yeah, well, yeah. Who would you want to? Who would would you want to collab with on that? Um, I don't know, like Bad Bunny or um, He's fire, yeah. um, what's his name? There's another one too from Mexico. Uh, uh, that Jay Balvin. Uh, yeah, Jay Balvin. Yep. Um, I forget the the other my other homie from Mexico that I, I'm really cool with. I'm not must be not that cool. I can't remember his name. <laughs> but, it's okay, it's uh, just blank. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, I would love to. What's uh, your favorite song on the new album? It changes all the time. Yeah. Um, I guess right now, Cheers. That's what cute it. Okay. Yeah, I was just listening to that today in the shower. Like, damn, we was going <laughs> in. This is fire, man. I yeah, forgot. Yeah. So real quick, so Q-Tip. Uh, so Tribe just had was it their 25th or 30th yeah. anniversary? It was the 20? Was it, they just had the anniversary of their big album. Can you imagine 25, 30 years from now? There's like a a Malibu anniversary. There's an Oxnard anniversary. Like 30 years, 25 years. Like, can you picture that far in advance? Because I'm sure Q-Tip at the time didn't think about that. Nah, yeah, I don't want to think about that. I'm gonna be feeling really old probably when that happens. <laughs> like, oh my god, I love when Malibu came out. And like, right. I feel really old now, but nah, I mean that would be amazing. You don't, you always wish that your music is gonna be timeless. That's yeah. that's what we do it for. Like we don't want to make anything like trendy or in the moment or something that when we play back, uh, you know, five, ten, even like a year from now, you know, like we don't want it to sound like oh that was dated. We were chasing some sound mm-hmm. that was only cool mm-hmm. for a week. Right. Which is like a lot of music now. Right. Yeah. Some stuff is like they put out music now and it's it's like gets old after literally like a month. Like you can't even play it no more. It's Disposable. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's OK. Every every sound, every song has its place. It, it, it serves its purpose for whatever. Maybe it is for a tiny window of time or maybe it's more longevity. Right. Um, Jenna, you can't tell right now, but she is super tatted oh, yeah. up. Oh. She has crazy yeah. tattoos. Um, and I, I nice heard work. you had some. Did you get some new ink? Because I like the meaning Ooh, of that, that and tiger. what it's surrounded yeah. by. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just did a little story. Like, you know, my mom came from Korea. She was adopted from Korea, so I got the Korean flag. Then she flew over. She, uh, she met my pops, who was in the Navy and the Air Force base, so she met him. He used to work on the fighter that jet. jet is nice. That's you know what I'm saying? Fire. And then they, they, they met in Oxnard, of course. And then they had me, the tiger, in 86, you know? And then <laughs> it's crazy. Is, so is that a regular tiger or is that a white tiger? Uh, that's a regular tiger. Okay, just need to know. It's, yeah. it's a weird no. thing. I like that it tells a story. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody these days just get random that was, tattoos everywhere and they just look. That's what I had. I w- I'm, I'm a museum of shitty tattoos yeah. and this is this is like my first like okay, one no I really thought about. <laughs> yeah. I got Sorry, all kinds man. of random stuff. That's good. I like that one though. Even I like that one. <laughs> so I don't want to hog uh, this moment. I want to kind of open it up to everybody else who uh, came out here to hang with Anderson. Is there any questions? Uh, I don't want you walking away without the opportunity. Yes, sir.
Uh, yeah. Is your name Fish Hooks? Is that what you said? That's cool. Um, <laughs> you know what? I just feel like some people make music to build people up. Some pe- people make music to destroy, you know? And I like to think of myself as a person on the on the left side, you know, building people up. And yeah, I, I think as I get older, I'm thinking about more. And, and, you know, as my kids get older, I'm thinking about more of what I do and how it affects, you know, the youth and anybody that may look up to me. But I think that my major thing, though, is being honest, you know, with, within my music. So um, it's like that's my major thing you know whether i'm talking about girls or political things or Mm -hmm. drugs anything is about being honest and how it relates to me and i know that's that's how it's going to really affect the youth and i'm definitely like just kind of like noticing like okay how many how many of my fans are like really young and you know older and, and everything like that but i try not to like have that completely dictate my creative zone you know when I, this is still just my outlet you know writing music is just uh something i do to like cope with you know the things that i'm coping with you know <laughs> so um i try not to like sacrifice too much out of that but as i get older i'm like okay do i really want to you know should i have done this like this or you know think for things like that but i think honesty is just the best thing i want to you know put out on my music Uh, with Tense, the only pushback I got was me and Dre was like, uh, Dre wanted to go with Left or Right for the first single, and I wanted to go with Tense. And so that was the only thing we kind of battled on. And then eventually I won, you know, <laughs> you know, obviously. But uh, there was no pushback, you know. Thank God, like, I've always been surrounded by people that are like, I've never been in a situation where I was like, oh, the label said I have to do this or anything like that. Like, I, I just, you know, do me. And I always partnered with people that, we're hundred percent like okay, you got it, you know. And uh, my uh, my lyrics have always been honest, you know. Like I've always said what I feel and how I feel, and um, I just think I'm getting more refined in that. But I didn't I didn't really get too much pushback. And then with the video, that was Dre and, and Colin Tilly that <laughs> that linked up and thought of that crazy ass treatment, you know. I, I I was we originally was like okay, yeah, some cars, some girls, like having a good time. <laughs> Dre was like hell no, nah. need to be locked up, blood on your head. <laughs> What's going on behind the scenes and stuff? I'm like, okay, well, that's cool too. Like, <laughs> yeah. Point. Yeah, like you yeah. can tell you've been yeah, around him yeah, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause we go back and forth, yeah. you know. I'm always like, you know, happy, and he's just like, you know, you need to, no. you need some more sexy series. <laughs> he's like, part of that right, gangster era. That's yeah, why. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but we, we, you know, that's it's, it's cool. That's like, I, tr- I got a lot of trust in him. He got a lot of trust in me, and he, he's really like, he really wants to see me do more like acting and stuff too. So he, he he's like thinking of the ways that we can he's a businessman yeah. like yeah, he's yeah. a good dude to have on your side because yeah. he's always thinking about how to make money yeah how to never you know always be timeless like yeah. that's what you got to respect about dre man yeah he's dope because like yeah he's of course obviously a businessman but he's never stressing like you need that that single we need to make some money on this one or anything like that like yeah. he's got plenty of money he doesn't have to do music if he doesn't want to he just does it because he, he loves, loves it. to do it yeah. so it's dope to be have someone that's backing you like that as opposed to like if i was signed to like some label that they you know they need hits and i'm just like kind of lowest on the roster mm-hmm. you know yeah I didn't, I didn't get much pushback did you have a second one also go ahead very open to new producers the way dre produces is he utilizes a room you know he has his musicians or writers that he's been working with for you know the time being and, and he has like a, a group or you know i can i bring people in there i bring my band sometimes and when he if he's in the room he's going to utilize the room okay let's try this i like that i don't like that let's move on to something like this let's move on to something like that but how it worked with this one is he, he just let me rock for like a year and a half after malibu after we dropped malibu and we were on tour i started working on the album right after and for like the first year and a half or so he just let me produce and, and work with whoever i wanted to work with and i was just sending him tracks is this dope i love this i love this tense was one of them um and he was like, yeah, we were just shooting, you know, back and forth. You know, he was he was producing in that way, you know, making sure that it's going through a filter, you know, like nothing leaves 
Aftermath without going through Dre, you know what I'm saying? And not every label works like that. So uh, once I, I got to a certain level, I thought I was done before working like really close to him. And he was like, no, you about 80%. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. And then, so then I was like, all right, cool, let's go back in. Then I worked directly with Dre and his producers. You know, he has a whole new generation of producers over there that are like baby Dre's, like J-Pounds and Mel, uh, Focus and Dim Joints, you know, just to name a few. And I got in and worked with them just at Record One at Dre's studio. And I damn near made a whole new album. So then it was like, cool, I had that, the new batch, and I had the stuff I had, and I just put that together. And then it became, and then we started mixing. And then the mixing process is a whole other thing. Once he starts mixing and we get all the tracks together, then he starts hearing other things. And then I was in there with him and we were like, oh, you know, adding little things like that and like, you know, building it up as we went. And so, yeah, that's that's the process. And yeah, on this album, I was all for working with the producers I want to work with. I spent like a lot of time just locking myself up in a room and being the, the main lead producer on a lot of stuff. And after a while, that it just gets boring and you want to have a conversation with other people. I worked with a lot of female writers on this one, which was really big for me. And just like, it was a lot of growth I had in this one. We're just trying to take it to another level that we hadn't taken before. That's so I think we have time for one more question. Okay. Oh, oh man. We, Anderson, you got to pick then. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> otherwise, they'll hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I, like how we I mean, he seems him. the most eager. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Mac was just the funnest time. Mac was my brother. He was my friend. It's rare that you get someone in the industry that you genuinely f have a real relationship with, that you're friends with. A lot of people, they want to work with you, and they just want to work with you just to make a song and, you know, really have a real relationship, you know. And uh, I met Mac on Twitter, and he was just like, congrats on being on Dr. Dre's album. And I was like starstruck, you know, another fan moment. And then yeah. I was like, you know how it is, man, trying to be cool. And he's like, no, I don't know how it is. <laughs> and then we were just like you know cool after that you know <laughs> and uh we just built a relationship and uh that you know that's all we only really did one song dang and that, that became like really my first real gold single that i was a part of and he was another one that was just always just never hesitated to extend his hand was like a magnet was a light was always in good spirits and just someone i could just hit up anytime and we would just you know, roast people anytime we see each other. <laughs> you know those friends you yeah. can just like, you know, oh my God, look at look it's at the them. Homie, Start yeah. just laughing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. We had so many times we were on tour and just linked up with each other and had just like the funnest times, man. So it was it was one of my best experiences, one of the, my favorite people I've ever ever known. You know? There's yeah. a ton of Mac Miller fans out here in Seattle. Um one of his tour stops was gonna be here December 9th. So it's a Sunday and, and uh right after his passing, just collectively we figured there has to be something. Yeah. So we actually teamed up um, with a really nice club out here. And that night, that night he was going to be on stage in Seattle. We're doing a Mac Miller celebration of life yeah. for him. So we have a, a whole club. We're playing Mac Miller hits all night. And yeah. just we have a lot of like, you know, projections on the wall for him. Again, uh, more of a celebration of life and the songs he was on and, and the messages that we took away from yeah. his music. So all benefits um, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, because it w it's, it's a benefit also. Yeah, so all, of, all proceeds go to Music Cares. So, you know what I mean? It's just something we can do for as a community, too. Just And it's five bucks. So if you guys want to go, you know what I mean? It's yeah. going to be really dope. We're all going to be there, yeah. too. It's going to help a lot of people heal. Um, again, Oxnard Eve, hours away from the next yeah. album. Give Oxnard? it up. Give it up for Anderson yes, Pack. Thank you.